In this episode of Law Gear, we look at one of the most recognisable melee weapons used by the forces of the Imperium of Man. It is of course the iconic Chain Sword. While much like a sword, it's more of a single-handed chainsaw, as with many weapons in the 40k universe, it's also monomolecularly edged, similarly to the previously discussed monofilament weapons like the Harlequin's Kiss. Blades with a monomolecular edge in the 41st millennium are designed to be able to cut with an extremely thin edge. This concept can originate from the use of materials like obsidian, which have been used to craft ancient blades with incredibly sharp edges, albeit very brittle, but so sharp that when you cut, it's said that you wouldn't even be able to feel it. Still, as with many things in 40k, the science often requires some suspension of disbelief, but the blades have a monomolecular edge, and this apparently makes them insanely sharp. While it is used by many forces within the Imperium, the Chainsword is not something unique to humanity. Orcs, Eldar, all have iterations which likely predate the human version of Chainswords. There are, of course, other chain weapons like the Chain Axe. While not necessarily the most elegant of weapons, the Chainsword brings a level of intimidation through its sound and effect. Not simply stabbing or cutting into an enemy, but quite literally ripping through them and shredding them into a mangled mess. It's a weapon that is also hardly designed to give a fast death to its victims, but instead a sustained period of pain and agony as it chews through its target before finally releasing them in an appropriately harrowing state. Still, while this all may sound terrifying to a civilian, it's going to likely be far less fear-inducing to the enemies of mankind, so it makes you wonder, to a point, why factor in any kind of intimidation into this. Still, there's always those heretics, cultists, and general human detritus to quell. And whilst we're talking about the dregs of society, it's worth considering the status of chain swords themselves as well. As with most things in the far future of humanity, some items hold a relatively uncommon or even rarer status. Now, chain swords are no mastercrafted weapons, generally speaking, there are of course mastercrafted chain swords, but they are still mass produced as an armament of the Imperium. But they do have a more elevated status than your average melee weapon. Chain swords are often used by the Imperial Astartes, as well as the Imperial Guard Commissars, General Officers and individuals of importance who may have taken on active combat roles. Within the lower levels of society, gang leaders, general hive criminals would relish the status that such a weapon would bring to them, not to mention the potential intimidation that they would be able to wield by demonstrating its effectiveness on rivals. The origins of chain weapons though, as with most of humanity's technology, point to the Dark Age of technology. However, it is unknown how or why these would have been created at the time. One possible origin though would be the Eldar. As one part of their aspect warriors are known as the Striking Scorpions, they wield Scorpion Chainswords, which are basically an Eldar design of chainsword. Given the Eldar race's ancient origins and the fact that it seems reasonably unlikely that they would steal a design of, from their perspective, a fairly straightforward technology from a race so clumsy and brutish as humans. So while humanity has been able to use chain technology for some time, it's anybody's guess as to how or why they decided to adopt this. Various majors within the Adeptus Mechanicus have dedicated decades of research into the origins of this tech, but are yet to really yield any solid conclusions. As with much of the tech produced by the Imperium, chainswords can come in a variety of different patterns, from single-handed lightweight blades to heavy two-handed versions, and of course chain axes. Base Marine Terminators also wield immensely powerful chain fists. The massive double-handed chain swords are known as eviscerators and are favoured by ecclesiarchy zealots, witch hunters, which are hunters of unsanctioned psychers, and some of the Adeptus Sororitas. While obviously challenging to use, the sheer weight and power of an eviscerator chain sword is enough to rend a human orc, and likely with much satisfaction, a Tau, easily in half. These massive power weapons can even rip through walls and deal some vehicle damage. Its large negative, of course, is that because it's a two-hander, wielding a pistol or some other ranged tool is not really going to be an option, which is going to limit the flexibility of its user in combat. Now, the Astartes may have specific iterations of chainsword designed to their chapter's own preference and or battle style. Some have very specific crafted designs, such as the Space Wolves Kraken Tooth Swords, whereby teeth are used from the Fenrisian sea monsters known as Ice Kraken. These can also be upgraded to some of these chainswords known as Frost Blades, 
but these master crafted and more specialist tools will not make up the bulk of blades produced. For Astartes, where the most common standard pattern is the Mark 11 Hell's Teeth pattern. Unsurprisingly, chainsaws require a fairly intensive level of maintenance. A quick wipe down isn't going to cut it with a combat tool having so many moving parts. However, thankfully, it is not a comparatively complex weapon and shouldn't require anything like the skillful incense burning abilities of a tech priest to return it to full working glory. For chain weapons, even your fairly brain-dead underhive damaged ganger should be able to clean and restore a chain sword to a relative state of functionality. Within the ranks of the Astartes, then serfs are going to be more than able to restore and prep chain swords for their masters next battle victims. Replacement chains for the swords are easily available in and out of combat environments, and while they initially will be readily able to cut through armour, this is going to wear them over time, and so replacement is going to be needed in a fairly short period. But a skillful space marine is going to aim for the weak spots in an enemy between the layers of armour so as to maximise the effective ability of his weapon. For Imperial Guard officers, if they're facing human rebellion or dealing with some crazy gangers, this is going to be less of an issue because they're generally going to have to deal with like leather, cloth, maybe some small amounts of armour whereas facing down hordes of tyranid or plated orcs is quite a different matter. Plus, when it comes to wielding a chainsword, it may appear savage and brutal. Simply hacking and slashing away at your enemy is going to be one, less effective, and two, likely to break the teeth and quickly ruin the chain. Chainswords do their best work when used with skill and precise sweeping strikes, and when in one-on-one -on -one melee combat, using the flat back edge of the chainsword to parry and block is going to be essential if you want to maintain the combat effectiveness of the weapon. Striking blade to blade or simply blade to melee or even blade to armour is going to again increase the danger of ruining and breaking the teeth of the sword. Then of course there is the fuel consideration because yes, what did you think was powering them? Some master or specially crafted iterations may have self-sustaining generators but most require fuel no differently than other imperial tech. They even have exhausts on the blades themselves. Now some crazier iterations of chainswords include the double-edged variations. These are known as Mercy chainswords, and they're simply adapted by removing the protective rear flat back to the standard swords. They're often longer as usually the intention is to swing the blade so as to strike any target within reach. Hardly a precise combat strategy, but depending on your enemy, potentially doubling its efficiency. As with most weapons in the far future, many have gained individual notoriety, one such being the Storm's Teeth. This massive chainsword was wielded by Imperial Fist's Primarch Rogal Dawn. It was said to have been fashioned before the Emperor rediscovered Dawn on his homeworld of Inwit. And this powerful sword is simply known as being one of the most faithful and prized weapons used by the Primarch and as such holds high status within Imperial Relics. Another famed weapon in the chain sword category is the Blood Reaver, used by Chapter Master Gabriel Seth of the Flesh Terrors, a small second founding of the Blood Angels. This prized weapon within the chapter is a massive two-handed chainsword, nearly twice the size of its standard variant. Such a weapon could only be wielded effectively by an Astarte such as the chapter master, and using such a giant weapon can inflict massive damage, swinging at 360 degrees and literally tearing through any enemies in its path. An appropriately signature weapon for the fearsome Flesh Terrors chapter, hence why it has such a renowned status as a relic weapon. Chainswords in the 41st millennium really are an excellent analogy for the savagery of unending war that exists. Because it's not enough to simply beat your enemy into submission, but it is essentially required that in doing so you inflict as much pain and suffering in the process as possible so as to assert your status as the true power in the galaxy. Few other weapons will inflict the raw brutality as a chain weapon that once they've caught a bite of an enemy will ravenously continue to feed on its victim until it's bidden all the way through. Very far from an elegant or surgical melee weapon, a chainsword is going to shred its way through flesh and bone, leaving its victim immediately into a state of shock and agony. And while other melee weapons can be more or less effective depending on their user's strength, the one significant advantage with a chain weapon is that while strength is always somewhat important, skill and precision can yield even better results than a more standard blade. To even bring a chainsword into contact with a softer part of the enemy is going to be enough for the razor sharp hooks to bite and then rend and rip through, doing all the work needed. Debilitating an enemy with a chainsword, leaving wounds so rough, just sweeping off arms and legs, often referred to by Imperial Guards as limbing an enemy, will lead the victim to suffer catastrophic blood loss that is unstoppable due to the shredded, mangled nature of the wound. 
The chainsword is truly iconic for the Imperium of Man as it not only represents the inhuman savagery of the 41st millennium but also the unstoppable grinding nature of the wars that continue to bite and eviscerate all the races in the far future, often leaving wounds that are beyond healing. It is the very definition of the Emperor's Fury.